that's uh, uh, I'd like for us now to move into our open mic segments and uh, we've done everything we can to ensure that whether you're joining us right here in this room or from very very far away that uh, you can be part of this conversation and tell us what you are learning in your space and what you're learning here at this conference our third annual IPSS I'm gonna pass it off to Stuart and to Ian shortly they're just gathering here in front of the stage they're gonna be roaming about but uh, Stuart is actually also going to read the written comments that are sent into the VidFlex chat. So please ensure you include your name and your organization uh, and just do a little type up and uh, we'll get it over to him. Over to you boys. All right. Here's how it works, everybody. We've got a little video. It's one minute long. It's a timer with some sand in it, one minute of sand. And uh, by the way, if this idea flops, is Mike McDonald around? Are you in the room? It was Mike's uh, idea. Where is? Okay. Uh, actually, this is a great idea. It's one minute. It's just a rotation. So one person gets one minute with the mic to give a little personal summary. What does it mean to be here? What have you learned? One minute. You'll see the video. You'll see the sand running out. Okay. And we'll do as many of those as we can fit in to the time we have. And I'm going to roam this side of the room. And Chief Ian is going to roam that side of the room, and we'll try to coordinate so that we can, we can do this successfully. There's people who are on VidFlex who, if you put into the chat uh, some reflections you want to be read here, we'll, I, I will pick those up, and I'll, I'll read them for you. And if you want your name attributed, just you know, put that in. So, uh, so let's get to it. What, have, can we have the video up there showing our, our timer? Okay, it's already started. Let's stop it because we're shaving seconds off. Okay, we're going to go back to the beginning when we have the first one. I'm, I'm going to uh, point to my friend Marco here if no one else uh, steps up to, to start. He has no idea that I might do that. But is anyone else ready to do that? Ian, do you see anyone? One minute reflection on what this day and days mean to you. Marco, would you like to uh, be my first victim? Marco, Marco Dukovic. That is so unkind of you to put me on the spot like that. <laughs> but uh, thank you. Um, okay, so one minute to go. Uh, first of all, just happy to be here for the third year round to see this grow. Uh, what I learned so far is that I'm not learned enough about uh, the things that we're discussing here. And what I really learned a lot from was actually the very first panel yesterday around uh, how to work with Indigenous communities and actually bring them as equity partners. So that was uh, very important. You're ahead of time. Lots of sand left. Okay, let's restart the, the timer, please. Can we have the sound effects with the time? <clears throat> check, check, all right, here we go. So one of, the, one of the one minute reflection I'm thinking today is that we are starting to become sphere intelligent thinkers, not so linear. We're in our canoe together paddling and understanding the waves, the currents, the tides, the weather, uh, the rip tides, so that we can actually start thinking outside of our paradigm. We're in a paradigm shift. And people need to understand that, especially to embed or imprint our indigenous ways of being and doing so that we can collectively as a, a very well, robust, sophisticated, socially conscious society, build a better future for our, our future generations. Amazing, like spoken, uh, spoken word there. That's beautiful. Great one. Okay. Dick Jones. Yeah. Hi. Um, my brother, my cell phone, Teal Cedar, my brother and myself in the bank. And it was, we've been working with a lot of the indigenous people on the island and up in Haida Gwaii for 40 years or more. Great people to work with. Um, we don't bring the depth of oil wells and this kind of stuff to the table. But I'd like to know is, why the hell did it take BC so damn long to get to this point today? Okay. Let's restart that timer. Thanks, Dick. Anita Hopperman with the Surrey Board of Trade. And uh, what I've learned is, uh, as one of the speakers mentioned, is that we have a whole new world of opportunities. It's going to be growing pains, but if we focus on working, collaborating together, we can envision a new world where every single person matters in this econ economy that we're living in with so many different socioeconomic changes uh, that we're facing each and every day. We can get through it together. Thank you, Anita. 
Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I, it, myself and my colleagues have absolutely enjoyed this conference so far, and we know we have more today. The main thing, I, there's two main things that we heard yesterday and that really resonated with me, and one was Chief Terry, and uh, Indigenous business is good for business, and uh, we believe that too, so um, that was good to hear. And then Karen from uh, the shared values and saying about operating in the gray. And I think that takes a lot of courage for both sides of the coin, for our Indigenous partners that we have in business, and also for us. But that's where we're finding the most innovation and the most success. So I was glad to hear that yesterday too. Thanks. Hi everyone, it's Donna Phillips with Pacific Cambrian. I just want to give kudos to the organizers. It's been a fantastic conference. I just really appreciate it. Um, one of the learnings from last evening with Jody Wilson-Raybould, I think she may have actually inspired some people to move forward and take positions in leadership and make decisions about running for positions. And one of the things that I was thinking about is she talked about the in-betweeners. And I love Jody Wilson-Raybould as an independent However, I think we need to come up with a new political party and we need to regroup. And she can't run the country as an independent, but I think there could be an opportunity for us to think with the longer term vision about having an in-betweener party. All of us in this room could support that kind of initiative and all the people, whether you have a million indigenous people in 2027, we have other millions of people that would support that million and we could have a vision to run this country with people that want to work collaboratively. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Bob, here we are. Do you want me to move out there? Do you want me to move out there? Yeah, just start talking. Well, good morning, everyone. It's uh, Bob Morassi. I'm the Executive Director of the Indigenous Resource Network, and I want to just first of all applaud Terry and Ian and Margarita. Just a, a wonderful job on the conference. Uh, it's been just, just amazing. Um, I'm out of Saskatoon, and I come to Vancouver quite often, and it's just the information sharing, the collaboration, the partnership building that's going on. It's just, it's just tremendous. It's exciting. As a former chief and regional chief for Saskatchewan, it's just wonderful to see this. Let's continue to build at the showcases. Let's continue to share information. But let's show corporate Canada and industry Canada as Indigenous communities what the value is in, in partnering partnering with our Indigenous communities. Yesterday you saw an amazing model, Coastal Gas Link in 16 communities. And Chief Louine said it best, we are not the passengers in the car anymore, we're in the driver's seat. So let's continue these partnerships and continue to share information and let's show Corporate Canada that partnering with Indigenous communities makes sense. Thank you my friends and relatives. Hi, I'm Jaden and I'm a student at UBC and it's really just been great to be the youth um, that's in this room and to see just the opportunities for me as somebody who's non-Indigenous to help support my peers in the classroom and then one day when I'm out in the workforce and to see just how much the adults in this room and in my life are doing so one day we hopefully can create this world that we're all dreaming of. Thank you. Hello, I'm a member of the Tall Tan Nation, and uh, I have a little plug for you guys. We have an on-track system that actually engages with our industry partners and allows youth to jump in into the workforce. Skeena has been a really big supporter of that. We have tons of youth that have used our on-track and jumped in and worked with Skeena and are developing their skills. So I suggest you take a look at that website. Um, and some of the things I learned, I'm a JID law student at the University of Victoria, so storytelling for me is a big part of this. And I think uh, the storytelling in real estate, industry, mining. We need to be able to tell those stories and we need to allow the oral histories and our laws to integrate into these projects. And so getting everyone into those spaces is really, really important. And so that's my big takeaway um, because through storytelling, we can get through conflicts and those conflicts do get us to good places. And I think the big takeaway from yesterday is if we don't have conflicts, you're probably not gonna be moving into the right spaces. So embrace them, I really enjoyed that. and. I would say just really focus, and if you can, the storytelling is just so important for Indigenous communities and our laws, so thank you. Uh, 
Uh, my name is Jolene Parent, and we have a motto as a longshore person that an injury to one is an injury to all. So winter, spring, summer, or fall, four different directions, community for all. Local and urban indigenous, let's include also diverse abilities uh, with the visual learners. So shout out to the uh, drawing for change. Now let's uncover, discover, and discard and rearrange this holistic landscape. Thank you again for the gifts, the books, the, the cedar. So let's plant and share our experience, strength, and hope. It's apparent. I'm Dene Nation, Chinese, and my name is Jolene Parent. Awesome. Thanks, Jolene. I'll, I'll read one. Here's from VidFlex from Carrie Chassels of Northeastern University in, in Vancouver, who says, my takeaway is the importance of building relationships and trust by collaborating with Indigenous communities from the very beginning and laying the foundation for authentic co-created concept development. Last one minute. I'm not going to say my name because I've crashed the conference. Um, so for those, <laughs> so for those who know me, thank you for not uh, kicking me out. But what I would like to, sh oh, and also I should thank um, the table for allowing me to sit with you, um, Fortis. Thank you so much. Um, but what I would like to share with you is that uh, this morning, I didn't get to come yesterday, I sat outside, but this morning I got to hear the young people speak who were sitting at this table. This was a power table. And after hearing them speak, I think our nations are in good hands. And we are here today to invite corporate Canada to get in the canoe with us. But you have to understand that before you get in our canoe, there are rules and protocols. While you're in the canoe with us, there are rules and protocols, and we have our own tools. And, when you, and before you get out of the canoe, there's also rules and protocols. So thank you. Well said. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have a question to everybody. Can a strong industry uh, indigenous partnership help prevent government interference and foot dragging and moving their project forward. In other words, tell the government to get stuffed and don't put it into a park. Uh, <clears throat> Kayvon Hirji from Newmont Corporation, a mining company. Um, you know, I think that the panel discussions this week have been, this, these past two days have been stellar, but what's also been powerful is just the individual conversations. I've learned a lot from those, and I think one of the things that stands out to me is sometimes as a corporate entity, you get really tied up into the weeds of ESG and targets and stuff. But I think what underpins all that is really just getting to know communities on a human-to-human -human and cultural-to-cultural -cultural basis. And if we can do that and align the values, I think there's a, there's a lot of opportunity there. My name is Justin Peters. I come from Salmon River, from the Okanagan Indian Band, and unceded traditional territories within uh, our Okanagan lands. Uh, I'm also the BC Assembly of First Nations Youth Representative, and I work quite a bit about building our network uh, amongst young leaders across BC who are First Nations. Uh, I just want to say that I'm very inspired by this event. Um, our relationship, our culture, our languages, our spirituality comes directly from the land and our creator. And so who else to uh, negotiate with and create relationships with uh, than the people digging up our land? And like it was said yesterday, though, um, the industries, the natural resource industries are moving faster with reconciliation than our own governments. So like I was said before, I'm very inspired by the youth who spoke earlier today and that we are seeing the wheel turn here. And... Um, yeah, within, within the next decades, uh, First Nations will have more power and control over our traditional territories. Thank you. Hello. Hey. So, hi, I'm Bob Dolly, I'm with the International Longshore and Warehouse Union with my colleague Jolene here. And what I've learned from this conference is 
that as an organization, and I think all organizations, we have to do more, right? We have to be deliberate in, in how we you know, communicate and how we uh, set our policies um, with indigenous people and, and um, really try to support them. And you know, I've learned so much, and, I, and, I, and I'm really sad that when I was growing up in school, we didn't learn about all the bad things that happened to indigenous people. We just learned about you know, some of the cultural things, and we didn't learn about that. And so it was like a shock to me when I grew up and I learned this stuff. And I was like, I, I didn't know. I was like, why am I living in this country? It's so terrible <laughs> that we, we did all this bad thing. But we, we need to make up that. This reconciliation has to be a purposeful thing. It can't be just, because sometimes we do things, but we, we say that we're doing things, but it's ad hoc. It's not really ingrained in our, in our, in our, in our organization. So I'm just glad to be here, and it was great. Thank you very much. One minute, starting now. Laoete uh, Swale, Christopher Teltsui. Um, my name is Christopher Peters. I'm a civil engineer, and that's my day job. Um, but I also do a lot of work outside of uh, my day job, including acting. So um, you may see me with the Greasy Bannock Theatre Group here in Vancouver. We've got a couple performances lined up. But I also uh, delivered my first keynote speech this year. Um, with the ASQ organization here in Vancouver. They have over 100,000 members worldwide. My topic was bridging the indigenous and colonizers' business worlds. So a lot of the work I do involves cities. So I'm working with City of Vancouver, City of Merritt, City of Edmonton. And um, I just got back from Winnipeg, so I'm hopefully going to get some work with the City of Winnipeg as well. And it's really um, what our people need to do today in 2022 is sit down together, work together, um, to create a better community for all. Hi, hi. Charles, please. Good, uh, almost lunchtime. Uh, my name is Charles Morvin. I'm from the Nishka Nation. And just reflecting on a little bit of what I've observed, I haven't been here too long, but one of the things that I see has been missing is uh, we reflect too much on the agreements. And one of the things we need to do is know our capacity so we don't over negotiate that and leave a lot of money on the table for revenue sharing. And so I, I think uh, one of the things that we need to really do is to really learn to uh, trust each other and, and know uh, our principles and values and partner with people that uh, have the same uh, values and principles that we do so that we're able to work together and trust and respect. Thank you. Utlama. <laughs> My name is uh, Larry Johnson. I'm from the Huayat First Nations. I'm the president of New China Seafood. My takeaway from uh, this conference is, well, number one, it was a fantastic conference. I don't think there was one uh, presentation that I wasn't uh, glued to and listening intently. Um, what I, what I did pick up on, though, too, was that we have so much in common. Our values are, are very similar all the way across the country. When I think about interconnectedness, uh, respect and taking care of. I think more conferences like this where we're all connecting with one another, becoming one voice, we can make a change in this country. Um, so, you know, when you partner with First Nations, we learn that everyone benefits. The co surrounding communities, everyone benefits. I uh, took away uh, um, the equity participation that's, that's now becoming part of uh, uh, the way to do business with First Nations. Um, I think uh, also the other takeaway was, uh, again, with the youth. I can see that we're going to be in good hands in the future. We just need to help each other more. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I'm going to finish with a, I uh, wanted to say in my first minute, so i get a second minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think one of the things that I, I just wanted to say is that uh, 
a lot of times we just focus on our, our benefit agreements and then we don't concentrate it enough on what we do to diversify what we negotiate so that we can invest in other things for more benefit for our people that we need to work on how to share our benefits with our our citizens through uh, shared equity distributions and learn how to do that and how to set up uh, a company like your business arm to be able to fund your um, government in perpetuity for the rest of your life. And so I think uh, those are things that we need to be concentrating on after we negotiate benefit agreements. Thank you. Thanks so much to uh, Stuart and Chief Ian for moderating that segment, and thanks to everyone who participated. Um, it was great. I feel like we wove a lot of threads together, and uh, now our brains are full, and we're ready to uh, go and uh, have our bellies filled a little bit, hopefully with some good food.